Trinidad with all of his accomplishments still 28 years old, two years younger than Coffey. A one inch height advantage for Trinidad. A two inch reach advantage for Trinidad. They both weighed in under the 160 pound limit. And tonight, unofficially according to our scale, Tito will enter at 165, Joppy five pounds heavier. Fun stat numbers, Larry. Total uh, punches, power punches, the recent fights. You can see Joppy, the much busier fighter, Trinidad resourceful and accurate. How busy can Joppy be against a big punching Trinidad? Power punches, roughly the same numbers. And rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Felix Tito Trinidad William Joppy fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing aid count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. Felix Trinidad enters first because it is Joppy who is the middleweight title holder in this bout. You're earlier in mentioning some. The banner says Roy Jones, you're next. Speculation that Trinidad, if he wins this tournament and adds the middleweight title to his collection, will look up 15 pounds toward Roy Jones and try to tempt Jones into a fight at 168 pounds. his opponent and win the fight. Patriotic theme for William Joppy. Stars and stripes on his way into the ring for the Washington, D.C. native. I love the name Joppy. Never heard the name Joppy before William Joppy. Came along. Some fan just grabbed him and tried to give him a big physical hug as he's walking into the ring. The last thing Joppy wants at this moment is to need to wrestle his way through the crowd. <laughs> but he makes it cleanly and goes on in. The overall record for William Joppy, a draw long ago early in his career. The one loss in 1997 was to Julio Cesar Green right here in Madison Square Garden, his only previous appearance here. Joppy says, I'm glad to be coming back to New York. I have nothing but bad memories. Now I'll have only good ones after I beat Trinidad. So both fighters.
Stars are in the ring. And now let's go up to ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden in New York City, for the featured bout of the evening, the second round in the World Middleweight Championship Series, and it's all brought to you by Don King Productions, in association with Madison Square Garden, TVKO, and Budweiser, the undisputed king of beers. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the World Boxing Association, President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor Aurelio Fiengo, along with the New York State Athletic Commission, the Chairman Mel Southard, Commissioners Jerome Becker and Mark Hornstein. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside. From Johannesburg, South Africa, Stanley Christodoulou. From Montreal, Quebec, Canada, Guy Jutras. And from Ardsley, New York, Melvina Lathan. And the third man to the ring, our referee in charge of this bout, working in this, his 16th world title bout, Arthur Mercanti. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Middleweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Madison Square Garden, it's time for the main event of the evening. Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring, wearing red trunks with blue and white trim, hailing from and representing Cupeauto Puerto Rico. He weighed in at 159 and one quarter pounds, undefeated in his campaign to the ring with 39 wins, no losses, 32 big wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the four-time world champion who currently holds the IBF and WBA Super Welterweight crowns. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome El Gran Campeón Puerto Rico. the ring is the defending world champion on my right fighting out of the red corner entering the ring wearing red white and blue trunks fighting out of Seabrook by way of Lincoln Park Maryland he weighed in at a ready 158 and three quarter pounds his record stands at 32 wins one loss and one draw with 24 wins coming by way of knockout Ladies and gentlemen, tonight he is making the eighth defense of his title. Here is the two-time and current WBA middleweight champion of the world, introducing William Joppe. And once again, a referee in charge, Arthur Mercanti, now to give instructions, 12 rounds of boxing scheduled. Good evening, Felix. Good evening, William. You both received the rules early in the night by the New York State Athletic Commission. I expect a nice, clean fight. Touch gloves. Good luck to the both of you. Will Joppy try to impose his presumed strength on Trinidad? Trinidad says calling out the double is one thing, facing him is another. The double will be in the details of this fight. William Joppy has never been showcased under such hot lights, under such an intense microscope. Felix Trinidad has spent the last few years of his career fighting in situations just like this one. Trinidad traditionally a slow starter, although in his last fight, he knocked Vargas down twice in the first round. Joppy gets in the first big blow, a right hand to the side of Trinidad's cheek. Trinidad is starting out the counter puncher tonight. You know, he's a good, accurate puncher. If he stands back, hold his ground, he can Sharp shoots some good overhand right. And that's what Joppy doesn't want to do is to run into Trinidad. You better make Trinidad come to you. 
William Duffy has a very authoritative jab. If he's able to land it early, he could establish control of the tempo in the fight. If Trinidad is able to slip around that jab, functional control could go to him. Jop has already established, you better move away from me. I'm in charge here tonight. Jop is sticking his jab right into the middle of Trinidad's face. Joppy throws his right hand and comes right back to the left jab. Basic boxing. Joppy looks anything but tight and tentative in this, his first mega bout. If anything, he's the looser of the two. Trying to let Trinidad know who the bigger man is, who the stronger man is. He's going straight to him, particularly with that heavy jab. Now Trinidad tries his own jab and sneaks in a little left hook. No matter how big you are, you just don't want to run and chase a puncher down. Trinidad can get on the right foot level you up. There's a big left hook from Tito Trinidad. Landed on the arm. Good oh, right hand. hand. Right hand lands again. And the pro Trinidad crowd comes to life. Terrific, and perhaps telling first round. Doppy goes down on a barrage of left hooks. Six, seven, eight. So just as he floored Vargas in the first round, so too does Trinidad floor Doppy in round one. And Doppy wrestles his way to the bell. After controlling the first part of the round, Trinidad Joppy walks into the Trinidad artillery, and down he goes. The big left hook, finishing that barrage. How much recuperative power does Joppy have left? George, I never cease to be amazed at the number of fighters who think they can stand in front of Felix Trinidad and get away with it. This may be the biggest benefit for Joppy, the exercise of being a middleweight, his ability to, re to re recuperate, recuperate. Only the second time that Joppy has been knocked down. But now he knows why Felix Trinidad is regarded as being so special. Once again, Trinidad is circling Joppy, giving him the impression that he's moving away. And Joppy has better be careful because Trinidad likes to get up on that right foot and just throw that thing like a baseball pitcher, that right hand. Let's remember, Vargas got up from two knockdowns in the first round and knocked Trinidad down himself in the fourth round. Joppy not yielding. Trinidad lands the right hand shot. Joppy's got to keep his hands up. Whatever you do, finish with your hands back in position. Trinidad has only been catching him while his hands are down. Drops his hand just a little too much. Joppy's still able to land his jab. 
it may be fool's gold if it tempts him to engaging or into engaging with Trinidad again. It's pretty good for Joppa because he was knocked down because of dropping his hand. Joppa reaching, trying to land a big right hand. Now pops Trinidad twice with the jab. You got to make that big punch of Trinidad work for what he gets. Throw away some of that power. Don't go into him for nothing. Joppy's still landing the jab, and now Trinidad flicks his own jab and pops Joppy twice. Joppy did something very good that this time. He moved to the left, and then he came back and moved to Trinidad's right. What you got to do, keep moving. Hard right hand by Trinidad. Trinidad doesn't seem to be concerned with Joppy's punching power at all. He's just letting everything go. <laughs> Joppy's going to get him. He's got to be on the move. Don't stand in front of this punch. Left hook by Joppy, partially blocked. Trinidad lands his left twice. Joppy with his hands down again. Now he gets him up. Crowd chanting for Trinidad. We go to Felix Trinidad's corner, where his father speaks to him in Spanish. Our translator is Ray Torres. How do you feel? Raise your hand. Take a deep breath, real deep. Tito, are you feeling well? Tito, keep your hands up. You're okay. Everything's fine. Let's take some water. Give him some water. Who's got the mouthpiece? Let's get the spit bucket here. Good combination, Rob. Gotta get tough now. You gotta get tough now. You can beat this room. My copy box numbers in the second round. William Joppy threw 50 jabs and landed 18 of them. Clearly, the jab is the weapon he hopes to rely on to win the fight tonight. Watch your head. Trinidad threw his own jab 23 times in the second round and landed 16 of them. So far, Joppy has been too easy a target for Trinidad. Now Joppy is starting his jab, the jab that we expected in the first round. With Trinidad playing the counter punch. Over the top by Trinidad. The Canty Jr. told Trinidad to watch his elbows. There are subtle ways of roughing up an opponent, and Felix is a master of most, if not all. Watch the elbows. Low blow by Trinidad there. The Canty Jr. steps in and warns him about that. So now he's been warned twice about the elbows and once about the low blows, and we're only in round three. Joppy has said that he would take the matter into his own hands if Trinidad punched low. There it was. There's blood apparently coming from Trinidad's nose. Yeah, when you got a lot of jabs like that, you're going to see a lot of blood from the nose. A lot of jabs being thrown, and it goes right to the nose. Joppa has already seen that he's able to get up from Trinidad's punch. Trinidad didn't have the stamina to finish him in that round. Well, remember, not only did Vargas come back to knock Trinidad down in the fourth after seemingly being gone from the fight in the first round, but he seized functional control of the fight for a few rounds. Three, four, and five. Maybe Joppy can pull the same table-turning act here. He's working that jab and throwing a wider variety of punches than does Trinidad. Right cross landed for Joppy. Not hard, but he made contact. Trinidad seems to be having a little trouble breathing through that bloody nose. Watch those elbows, gentlemen! Joppy 
throwing more punches and landing more so far in round three. Trinidad trying to measure him for another big left hook. Great, great. It seems that in this round, Joppy has found something, a way to go at Trinidad with his jab. And Mercanti risking life and limb to pull him apart at the end of the third. And don't get over anxious. We're okay. Fight him up close, but don't lower your hand. You've got to throw the left hook, left hook to the body. Let, throw the left hook to the body. All right? Astonishing CompuBox numbers in the third round. William Joppy in round three by CompuBox estimate threw 65 jabs, landed 27 of them threw 116 punches overall. I sincerely doubt that any opponent has ever thrown 116 punches against Felix Trinidad in a single round. He's keeping Trinidad very, very busy. Watch out. He Let's can fight four rounds like the last one. The championship rounds will be very important in this fight. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored through three? Look at Jim, two rounds to one, 29-27, Tito Trinidad. Jim, he gets an extra point that the, you know, for the uh, knockdown of round one. William Joppy too busy in round three. He wins that one. Jim, if you're looking for more movement for Joppy, this ring is spongy. The padding underneath the canvas has never been used before, and it's a very slow, spongy ring. Trinidad with two hard right hands now. Stopping Joppy in his tracks. Big left hook. Second knockdown of the fight. Joppy tremendously hurt by this fight. Six, seven, eight. Convinces Mercanti he can go on. He's in with the greatest finisher in the game. He has almost two minutes to finish it. Gets a shot, goes to the body with the left hand. That is it. You just gotta give Trinidad a little more respect. You can't go toe to toe with him. Nobody can. Job is making a mistake. Don't go to toe to toe with him. Move. Trinidad digs the left hook to the body, trying to set up another big one upstairs. Missed with the right. And Joppy's able to grab on again. The plain fact of the matter in this fight is Joppy has landed some good solid punches. He has not hurt Trinidad as badly as Trinidad has hurt him. Absolutely right. Trinidad is missing, the clear. Is that missing a lot of shots. Right. And you got to hope that if Joppy can hold on for a couple of rounds, it'll come back to haunt him. Joppy is still wobbly from the punch that floored him early in the round. It was a sensational left hook shot. After two right hands, burn him. The referee is looking really good now. Give William Joppy credit. He's standing up to the most deadly puncher in the game. All the courage in the world. Well, he's not really standing up, Harry. He's, he's wobbling up to him. He's wobbling. <laughs> <laughs> and he makes it out of the round. <laughs> what a gutty effort by William Joppy. Why don't you move your head? You're getting hit by your move there. Your head is not moving. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. The head is not moving. You stand in front of your head, keep moving. You get down and go away at the ball. You're not going to the fight at all. All right. Keep your head moving. We're rolling. What makes Trinidad Trinidad is 
He's more than a one handed puncher. He can hurt you with both hands as he did there. And that led to the left hand that led to the rest of that round with Joppy desperately trying to survive and succeeding only at that. Shades of Mike Tyson against Trevor Burbank because Joppy was down twice on that left hand. Got up, fell down again, finally got up and stayed up. Gutty effort by Joppy just to make it out of round four. But he's been down twice in the fight. He still continues to follow Trinidad around. And stand in front of him. Jim, that's the kind of fighter he is. That's the kind of fighter that got him to this point. He can't change his way of fighting. He's got to be it. Either he's going to be stronger than Trinidad or Trinidad is going to be stronger than him. So far, we have the answer. Trinidad doesn't look to hit you on the chin. He'll take anything the side of the head, the ear, top of the head, under the head. Well, we've seen him stop What's fighters that? with body punches as well. He'll take any shot that you let him have. Once again, Joppy building up a huge activity level in round five. Remember, in round three, he threw 116 punches. CompuBox confirms that's the most ever thrown against Trinidad in a single round of a fight they tracked. Tito, watch the elbow. Come on now. Never been a champion for so long who continues to work hard in the gym. The road work, as Trinidad does. Continues to have the same desire to stay in shape. Yeah, he loves it. Simple man, simple life, great boxing style, left hook, right cross, Duffy's in trouble again. Trinidad throwing every shot with murderous intent. He loves the knockout, he says. Joppy just believed that he can do it. Take it and come back. Joppy trading shots toe to toe with Trinidad. This is the way they used to do it. The fight wasn't over until it was over. Ooh. Joppy went down to the body. this time. Tito Trinidad may be the deadliest puncher in these divisions since Ray Robinson. It's, he's like a pin a pinpoint boxer who can thread the needle, but he does it with power. I got no arguments with that. <laughs> He can be mentioned right along with Ray Roberts. Well, you talk about using your punches efficiently. By CompuBox numbers in the fight, Felix Trinidad landed 108 of 191, 57%, most of them power shots. Just a devastating performance against an outstanding fighter. He said before the fight, if Jumpy comes to the fight, it will comes to fight. It has to be a knockout. He's right. Let's 
go up the ring and out to Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the official particulars on Trinidad's sensational TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 2 minutes 25 seconds in round number 5. Our referee in charge, Arthur Mercanti, stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout, and he is the new WBA middleweight champion of the world, El Gran Campeón Puerto Rico, Felix Tico. victory, the 33rd by knockout, his 20th win in a championship fight, now half the fights in his career have been title fights, an incredible you, journey to He can be mentioned now right along with all of the previous middleweight greats, he's done it, he showed me, he made a believer out of me. Well, he's got another fight coming up against a great fighter named Bernard Hopkins in September, and that will give him another chance to add to his already glorious credentials. Felix Trinidad continues to make a mark on history. It's the nature of the sport that the more punches you throw, the more vulnerable you are to the incoming from your opponent. 400. Choppy rolled the dice tonight. He threw 400 punches in five rounds. That's a tremendous output, but it made it possible for Felix Trinidad to land at a 57% connect rate. And with Trinidad throwing the kinds of punches he throws, you simply cannot allow that to happen. Trinidad landing more than half his jabs though he scarcely needed them because Joppy, by throwing 225 jabs, gave Trinidad plenty of opportunities to counter with power stuff. Everything you want in a middleweight fighter, this guy's got it. Power punches, devastating as always for Trinidad, 80 out of 140, nearly 60%. Joppy's a good fighter, but nobody in the sport weathers that storm if Trinidad gets the chance to land like that. Power punches, 57%, my goodness. Larry Merchant stands by with the truly great Felix Tito Trinidad. Felix, congratulations. Felix, were you surprised that he came at you so aggressively? I, I knew he was going to do that. He wanted to impose his will and, and his weight, but it wasn't that way. He couldn't do that. How soon did you realize that you're at least as strong as him? I've always said I was a middleweight, and I proved it tonight. I'm a real, true middleweight. The questions in this fight were, could a real middleweight take your punch? Could you take a real middleweight punches? La pregunta en esta pelea eran que si un peso mediano de verdad podía aguantar tu golpe y que si tú puedes aguantar los golpes de un mediano legítimo. Eso era una buena pregunta, pero ustedes vieron y le doy gracias a HBO. Ustedes vieron que yo soy un peso mediano y al mejor promotor Don King, yo soy un peso mediano de verdad y lo demostré el día de hoy. You saw that tonight that I'm a real true middleweight and thanks to Don King, I won. Did, were you surprised that he was able to continue after the early knockdowns? It, it, it kind of surprised me, but he came in good condition like I knew he would. Great fighters like him come in good condition to withstand all this, but I knew I was going to do it. Can we assume from this victory that you will give up your junior middleweight titles? Podemos asumir ahora que con esta victoria tú vas a dejar los pesos de junior. Es posible. Eso nos reunimos con el con el promotor Don King, con mi padre, y veremos qué vamos a hacer con los títulos medianos. It's very possible. We got to meet with Don King, the best promoter, and my dad, and we'll see what happens. Do you want to go down below 160 pounds to fight again, or are you happy at this weight? ¿Tú quieres bajar esto menos de las 170 libras o estás contento y feliz en este peso? No, estoy, estoy feliz en este peso. Eso lo, lo dialogaremos con el Don King, con mi padre. Pero yo creo que ya soy campeón mediano y 
y para Roya, Puerto Rico. I, I'm, I'm happy with the 160 pound weight. We're going to again talk Viva to my promoter, and, and then I'm, I'm happy Viva I'm staying there. All right, talk to us about Bernard Hopkins. Will Hopkins be a more difficult opponent because he is more versatile than Joppy? Dino algo de, de Hopkins. ¿Tú crees que él va a ser más difícil porque tiene más versatilidad que, que Joppy? ¿Qué dino algo de él? Bueno, este, Hawking, yo sé que él va a venir bien preparado para, para pelear conmigo. Yo estoy seguro que sí, cuando yo, yo le pongo mi mano, la pelea se va a caer por la cosa también. I know, I know uh, Hopkins is going to come well prepared to fight with me, but once I hit him, the fight is going to be over. Viva Puerto Rico! Viva Puerto Rico! Do you feel that you have to beat Hopkins to really feel that you are the one middleweight champion? Tú sientes que tienes que ganarle a Hopkins para comprobar y probar de una vez que tú sí eres el mejor campeón mediano que hay. Bueno. Ya le acabo de ganar al, al mejor, para mí el mejor campeón. Y si, y si hay que hacerlo, voy a lo que era para Hawking y así puedo probar que soy el mejor peleador del mundo y el mejor peso mediano. It, it really doesn't matter. I beat the best middleweight tonight. Now I am the best. If I got to beat Hawkins to prove it, I'm going to prove that I am the best middleweight. Así mismo hacer. That's the way it's going to be. Congratulations again, Tico. Viva Puerto Rico. Quiero, quiero enviar un mensaje a, todo, a todas las madres puertorriqueñas, especialmente a mi esposa, a mi madre Irma, que está conmigo. Y que viva Puerto Rico siempre. Mañana vamos a celebrar. Y saludo también a Denis Quiñones, mi, mi Universe 2001. Gracias a todos. I want to send a, a, a special Mother's Day uh, to my mother, my wife, and all the Puerto Rican mothers. Tomorrow we're having a, uh, a celebration in Puerto Rico. And we want to congratulate Miss Universe, Miss Puerto Rico. It's already Mother's Day, Tito. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Con el lecho, gracias, mi gente. Lo quiero mucho, Puerto Rico. Mañana vamos a celebrar en grande. Lo espero en la puerta Luis Muñoz Marín. Besos para todos, Ana Marín. Thank you, Puerto Rico. We're going to see each other tomorrow. We'll see you. We love you all. Thank you, Tito. All right, back to you, Jim. All right, thank you, Larry. So you can lay aside the question of whether moving up in middleweight is a topic for Felix Trinidad. It poses no problem whatsoever as he goes into the ring against a strong middleweight opponent and blows him away with the same power punches that terrorized the 147 and 154 pound divisions. George, it started with the left hook and continued in the fourth round. It started with stupidity by Joppy chasing around a puncher. That's what started in one punch. Whenever you swing something, a hook, a right hand, it would always be there. Boom, there you go to hook. It was a matter of like a table set for a king. Everything you want on the table was there. And when Joppy finally held his right hand higher to try to guard against the left hook, Trinidad came back with a series of right hand bombs in round five to seal the deal. Question, you've seen Bernard Hopkins, you know his game. Does he have enough variety to stand at angles, never be in front of Trinidad and do damage? It looks to me like that's the only way to fight it. I have a profound answer to that. No. <laughs> it's quick, too. <laughs> a very quick answer. So Felix Trinidad moves to 40 wins, no losses. George, I think every time he moves up in weight, he gets a little stronger on his feet, a little more stable in there. Yeah, and he sort of reminds you of a Bobby Foster now. He's not the thicker, seems to sit right there and have the power in those arms. He doesn't have a lot of muscular, muscular a show off or nothing, but he has the power right yeah, there. No, well, we've it. talked about punching power and where it comes from, and clearly part of it is, do you commit to the punches? Nobody commits to the power punches like this guy, right? You know, talk about Happy Mother's Day. That mother he has evidently has a lot to do with that because she gave it to him at birth. It's stuck in there like something I haven't seen in a long time. He's got that punch. All right, quickly now, Larry Merchant with a report from uh, William Joppy's locker room. Jim, we're here in... William Joppy's locker room. He's understandably disappointed. Uh, he's in a terrific physical fight. He put up a valiant effort, now just pulling himself together. And we're going to try to uh, interview him uh, briefly to see what he can tell us about the fight and Felix Trinidad. William, you were in there with a guy who moved up from Wellaweight, but he sure looked like a middleweight tonight. Yeah, he has a hell of a punch. I underestimate him. Um, just like I said, he did what he had to do tonight. Um, and before I underestimated him, um, I didn't think his punch of power was that devastating, but it was. And I couldn't come back from it. He uh, he uh, was relentless, and he was a better man tonight. 
I'll be back, though. Did you feel that you had to attack him as you did, particularly with the jab, because that was your best chance? Mm, not really. You know, um, I know that he's um, vulnerable to a left hook, just like he throws one. Um, but that's, you know, that's my game plan. You know, you've seen me fight before. I always come out with, you know, jabs like I do. So going straight at him, you felt you were going, you're the stronger guy. You got the better jab. I'm going to put him on the defensive, but that also gave him opportunities to nail you, and, and his punching power was simply bigger than you expected. Yeah, exactly. He was, um, his punching power was devastating, I must say. Uh, but, um, you know, like I said, I'll be back. He, um, he was a better man tonight. Uh, I, I underestimated him, and um, he uh, showed me something different. Bernard Hopkins, a different fighter than you, will fight a different kind of fight. Uh, can he avoid those heavy punches? Does he have some chance in the way he fights against Felix Trinidad? Yeah, I mean, he, he could, you know. Uh, after seeing this fight or watching Trinidad's past fights, he could have studied him, and he might come out different uh, September 15th. Thank you very much, William. Thank you. Back to you, Jim. All right, so the first two fights of the middleweight world championship unification series are now in the books. And Felix Trinidad has become a middleweight title holder, as is the veteran Bernard Hopkins. And now they will meet, presumably September 15, here in Madison Square Garden, sometime in the fall at least, on TVKO pay-per-view. This man, Bernard Hopkins, and Felix Trinidad will settle the middleweight issue. For the moment, this is the happiest man in the arena because he just got the chance to collect an extra seven figures for the privilege of fighting Trinidad instead of Joppy. What are the important lessons for you to take away from what you saw in the ring? Exactly. I feel like I just hit the lottery, even though I ain't win the tournament yet. I've seen a lot of good and bad. Trinidad would never be able to do the things he did to me that he did to Joppy. He had the perfect opponent, the perfect style, a shorter guy, a guy that's not a really big puncher, and Trinidad capitalized on it. He fought a great fight. You've been saying all along that Trinidad's style will be easier for you in the final than Joppy's would have been. Why? One is because Joppy is a, a slappy type of guy, a cutie. Trinidad fights just like it is. He's right there like an alley fight. That's what I like. He's not backing up, and he's going to go against mano to mano. He's going to test his will against yours. That's the type of fight I am, that Philly fighter. There's going to be a lot of in fight with me in Trinidad, and we're going to see who's going to back up. Bernard, uh, Fernando Vargas squared off and traded with him, paid a big price. Joppy decided to square off and trade with him, paid a big price. You going to square off and trade with him? I'll do anything that I have to do to win the fight, and I believe that's the one of the ways that I will be successful. It's because these guys did square off and traded with him, but they left their defense shattered, down at their waist, up high or up low. They didn't really try to do set they will, put their will on Trinidad, and Trinidad knew that, that these guys wasn't phys physically strong as he was. I'm a physically strong middleweight. I can punch, people know I can take a punch, and I got speed, and I got a little movement to give him problems. Trinidad is gonna realize that I'm a true middleweight, six foot tall, just as, just as well as he is, and that I've been here for over 11, 12 years, and he'll see the difference. He'll see the difference in my experience, and he'll see a difference in my power. He's excited, he's happy, and he's a little bit wealthier tonight than he would have been if Joppy had won. We'll see you in the fall, Bernard. Thank you, Larry and George. Take care. Thanks, HBO. Undisputed history. All right. Bernard Hopkins against Felix Trinidad sometime this fall. I can't wait. Let's go back up. To